Hi, welcome to an instructional video on how to play SCP, the board game. Your object is located on the bottom of your roll card. The D-Class and Chaos Insurgents are on the same team and have similar goals. Same as the knight Herod Fox and the Scientist. To set up SCP, the board game, you will determine the amount of players playing. Distribute the correct roll cards randomly. One player will receive one roll card. Three players. One nine-tailed fox, one scientist, and one TCC SCP. Or you can choose to do one D-class, one chaos insurance, and one SCP. Distribute the boards to the right players. The nine-tailed fox will start on board one. The chaos insurance will start on board five. The D class will start on board eleven. Scientist will start on board seventeen, and SCP will start on board twenty. Distribute the right key cards to the right players. The nine-tailed fox will receive level three. The chaos insurance will receive level three, and the scientist will receive level two. On your turn, you can move or attack. You can only attack if you are in a battle. You can move by rolling the dice and moving it that amount of spaces. The first example, the night hail fox will pick up a level 1 key card. They, if they land on the level 1 key card, then can pick it up, or you can pick it up if you just happen to go over top of it. You do not have to land on it, just pass it. Next, they will try to enter through a lock. That is a level 3 lock, and if you do not have a level 3 key card, you cannot enter room 18. Next, when you, add, when you get to the end of a room and can still move, you get the next room, which is room 14, and you will move onto that board. You then remove room 14, at room 15, which was the previous board, and put it back in the pile. Battles. When you are two spaces away from a player that has an imposing objective, the battle starts. You cannot flee a battle until your next turn. On your turn, you can flee your attack. SCPs cannot flee. If, you're at, if you attack, you roll the die. The number you rolled is your attack score. The player being attacked must roll a number equal to or higher than their defense number. If they fail this, they take the rolled damage. The nine-tailed fox lands two spaces away from the SCP. A battle begins. They roll number three. Now to attack. Now the SCP must roll to defend. The SCP rolls a number 1 and fails. They fail because their defense number is number 2, and that is below their defense number. So they take 3 damage, which would result in the SCP having 12 health. Now, the game continues as normal. So, maybe the D class would go, but eventually it will get to the SCP's turn. On the SCP's turn, they must attack the Nine-Tailed Fox. The Nine-Tailed Fox, the, the SCP rolls a 5 to attack. Now the Nine-Tailed Fox must defend. The Nine-Tailed Fox rolls a 6. And it succeeds because the defense number is 3. So the number 6 is bigger than the number 3. So the, SC, so the nine-tailed fox takes no damage. It is to note that this is not because a six is higher than the five. If the, if the nine-tailed fox were to roll a three or a four, they would still have defended. The only way the nine-tailed fox can take damage is if they run roll a one or a two. On the nine-tailed fox turn, 
they choose to run away from the SCP. Now time to discuss how SCP-914 works. SCP First, the player will land on SCP-914. They will choose a key card that they have. You cannot use SCP-914 if you do not have a key card. They choose secure access card number two. Now, you must roll a die. If the player rolls number two, you can see the dot. You can see the instructions in the top left of the screen. A three or below is a downgrade. So the secure access card is downgraded to level one. However, if they were to roll a five instead, it would be four or above, which means that their key card would be upgraded to a level three secure access card. The Alpha Warhead can only be activated using a level 5 keycard. You then land on the level on the Alpha Warhead and use your level 5 keycard to activate it. When activated, 10 turns in total remain for the D-Class or Scientist to escape. If they have already escaped or died, the game automatically ends. If the scientist does not escape before the silty is exploded, the, the nine-tailed fox would lose. The nine-tailed fox does not have to escape the facility to win the game. Direction ship is only used when SCP-173 or SCP-096 is used. Nine-tailed fox will move forwards two to the right. Their direction ship will now point to the right. In this instance, we are playing as SCP-173. Now, SCP-173 cannot move. So, if it would be or to be SCP 173's turn next, they would not move until they are not being faced by a player. However, if this is SCP 096, SCP 096 can't enter a battle unless a player is looking at it. So, in this instance, SCP 096 would be able to enter a battle because the nine tailed fox is looking at it. If you die, by you die when you lose all your health. If you, well, if you then if you die, you will respawn on your next turn. Roll the die to figure out which, which class you will spawn as. If it's three or below, you respawn as a nine-tailed fox at board one. If it's four or above, you respawn as the Chaos Insurance at board five. The game ends when a player successfully completes all of their goals. The first player to do this wins. The nine tailed foxes are the and scientists are on the same team and will both win. The scientist escapes and the nine tailed fox will destroy the facility. That would be a nine tailed fox and scientist win. The same was to say, Caius Insurance and the D class. The D class escapes the facility and the Nine-Tailed Fox Scientist and SCP are killed by the Chaos Insurance. Here are some shots of SCP, the board game. I would rec- If you are interested, there is a link to buy this game in the description. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this helpful.